Put on that hard hat and buckle up that tool belt. It's time for some heavy-duty conversation about all things construction. Welcome to Tommy's Toolbox, the podcast. I'm your host, Tommy Whitehead, and I'm also the CEO of Tomco Solutions, a full-service building, renovation, and storm restoration firm based here in Tampa, Florida. Sitting with me at the drafting table today is Paula Blanda, the insurance lady of Florida All Risk Insurance, to discuss navigating insurance claims. Welcome, Paula. It's so good to see you. Thank you, Tommy. I'm so excited to be here. For those of you that haven't met Paula, she's a networking queen. You see her in every circle. Absolutely adore having her. And more than that, she is an industry leading expert in almost all things insurance. So we are very privileged to have you here today. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, we're excited to have you. (laughs) So we're going to start off with your foundation. Okay. So Paula, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like where are you from and what interested you in the industry? Oh, this is such a great question for me. I'm from Pennsylvania originally and my dad had played pro football and after he got out of football, he went into the insurance business. So really? his company sent him to Tampa here in 1961 when I was a tyke <laughs> to open up insurance down here. So I've been here in our area for all these years. Wow. So you like, this is almost like family line blood information. Yes. Now. You've been doing this forever. Yes. And when I was a child, my dad was always saying insurance, insurance. I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> but what I do remember is the first time I saw my father with tears in his eyes, He had gone to deliver a life insurance benefit check to a widow who had just lost her husband in a car accident with small children. He was in the life insurance business, and when he came home, he had the tears in his eyes. So that has stuck with me. My dad was very passionate about insurance, and it is, it's just in my blood. I feel passionate about it, too. That's incredible. You, yeah. you want to help people. Yes, exactly. That's what it's all about. That's, that's amazing. That's, that's what it's amazing. all about. So how did, so that kind of tells us a little about where you come from, but how did you get started in insurance yourself? What made you yes. decide to make that jump and say, you know what, I'm going to be Paul of the Insurance Lady? Yes, well, I have a huge career in marketing, and I was out and about doing thousands of grassroots events throughout the state of Florida. Well, here I got a job with an insurance broker. The broker said, hey, you're going to go out and call on all these agents throughout the state and have them send commercial business to us. So I came in, okay, I'm going all around the state of Florida, calling on agencies big and small and in between, all on commercial insurance. And then I was finding out, I was visiting with our agents, all the great things they were doing in their community. Every agent, oh, I'm sponsoring a little league team. I'm the president of the chamber. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And I was so excited that they were all such good people and doing such good things for their community. Aside from helping people with their insurance, I said, hey, I'm going to become a retail agent. And here I am. So wait a minute. You're telling me the insurance part was interesting and cool, but it was seeing the community involvement in how those professionals interacted. And that's what really sold you on the industry? Yes. Yes. So much. So much. That's can incredible. You, can you remember maybe as a kid, you're playing Little League. It's always the insurance people have their banners yeah. up. You know, they're, they're, the insurance folks, the local independent agencies do so much for their communities. It is just amazing. I never realized how integrated they were into the community. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, so that's, that's a wonderful way to get into a career you. path. Thank, I, I think so, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you have a role model or maybe a mentor that's helped you along the way? I do. And my role model was my father. Okay. Yeah. He was uh, an ex-pro football player, very good looking, very charismatic, and he just went out and played golf with these guys all the time and just sold the heck out of life insurance. (laughs) He had a 100% closing ratio. He never met with a client that did not buy policies from him. Wow. And he was the national sales director for the Equitable at this time, and he flew all over the country training agents how to sell and treat their clients. So basically, you're telling me if you were a football player, you'd be all the things that you just mentioned about your dad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, if I was. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, but so yeah, definitely my father was an inspiration for me. Oh, that's that's so great to hear. What drives you? What's your what's your favorite part of everything? What is a successful day? A successful day for me is when I talk to my clients and I give them some relief and some feeling of peace that they know they're working with someone who's knowledgeable and has their best interest. And I truly enjoy helping educate our clients, too, on what coverages they have or what they may not have. So I find it's truly, truly, very basically helping people. And it's so crucial in their life. We help people ensure their dreams, whether it's their business or their home or their boat. So we're helping people with their dreams. Wow, that's amazing. That's got to be such a great feeling. It is. It is. I enjoy it so much. So, Paula, we're going to talk about our tools for success. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. 
I'd love for you to tell us why what you do is so important. It's so important to make sure folks are covered properly. Quite frankly, there's a lot of agents out there that may not have the skill set that we have or even the companies that we have to offer our clients. And we want to make sure everyone has the correct coverage. Some agents will actually underinsure a home. So let's say someone's worked very hard. They're first-time homeowners. They've put a lot of money, time, and effort and goals and purchased their first home. And then an agent can sometimes actually make an error on a policy or underinsure the home. You have to work with people that are knowledgeable and understand the marketplace. And it does change daily in Florida. And so as a contractor, I've personally seen underinsured homes after Have full you? disasters. Mm-hmm. I've had to help homeowners get back to normal when they weren't paid enough to get back to normal, Ugh. including when your house is fully destroyed, when you have to completely level it. Exactly. Uh, that, that's super important. And I'm, I'm glad that your agency focused on making sure valuations and proper coverage is in place. We do. And of course, now with costs going so dramatically higher, that's a factor as well. So we like to factor that in geographic locations, the quality of the homes. So there are many factors that help us determine that. And we use what's called a replacement cost estimator. That's a software tool that actually appraisers use. We have a much succinct version, and that helps us determine the amount of coverage you should have based on your square footage, garage, pool, porch, whatever your particular home has. So there is a methodology behind it. Wonderful. So you're telling me that if the real estate values increase, like it has here in Florida yes. consistently for the last few years, yes. and, and you wrote a policy three years ago and it was 200000 but now it may be $300,000. You guys are looking at that every year. We right? are. We are. We look at that as your agent, and many of the companies do that as well as you come up for renewals. They have an automatic inflation guard built in okay. where when you come up for renewal, they might go ahead and increase the coverage on your building or dwelling. That's amazing. Yes, it's, it's crucial to have, especially these days. So many people don't think about that. So it sounds like it's a good idea to check with your agency frequently. on. Yes, that. yes. And if you do any changes, some people like in your scope, they might add on a room or remodel or upgrade. Please let your agent know. So that can be adjusted on your policy. That's a good point. Anytime I do additions to homes, I definitely tell my clients, you yes. need to talk to your insurance agent and let them know because yes. if the insurance agency doesn't know and doesn't increase your coverage, no. then that's gone. Your investment is gone exactly. if there's a disaster, right? Agreed, agreed. So that's great that you you let your clients know that. That's amazing. Okay, it's great to hear that you guys are on top of that. So this is a big one, Paula. Mm-hmm. What is the most commonly asked question you receive when it comes to homeowners insurance? Well, I'll tell you, I think I have a twofold. Let's go for it. <laughs> let's I go. Hear both. Let's go. So let's say someone's buying a house on the beach. They're right on the water. They're paying $1.2 million for it. That's a little 1,000-square-foot beach bungalow. Okay. We might write the insurance for three or 400000 whatever it might be, to rebuild that particular home. So we get asked, gee, I'm paying $1.2 million for this. Why aren't you covering it for $1.2 million? Okay. That's because of the land value. We don't insure the land. We it's only insure the building. Yes, okay. yes. So we hear that quite often, especially in cases like that. And, of course, in our area, the land values keep increasing and increasing. So we hear that a lot. Of course, now with the Florida insurance crisis, we are hearing, why are the prices so high? That's another thing that we hear every day. Uh, we're hearing now from our association that the average Florida homeowner premium for a new policy hovers around $6,000. $6,000. So, yes, Yes, that's what we're hearing. Of course, that factors in the whole state. And, of course, the insurance rates are determined by where you're located and the amount of coverage and the type of home and whatnot. But overall, with our crisis, the rates are tending to skew much, much higher. Wow. So I'm glad you touched on the insurance crisis. So I've, I've... I have the pleasure of knowing your colleague, Jeremiah Flynn, yes. with Florida All Risk, and, and I got to listen to a great presentation recently from him, and he was talking about the insurance crisis, and he was talking about reinsurance, and he was talking about uh, claims in California affecting premium rates in Florida. Yes. It's a very, very complex model yes. that most people don't understand is why is something yes. 3,000 miles away affect us? Can yes. you tell us, can, and maybe it's a loaded question, but can you tell us a little bit more about the insurance prices, what reinsurance is, why are claims so far away affecting us here in Florida? Correct. It is a worldwide insurance economy. Many of the large insurance companies that reinsure companies here in the U.S., that means They cover the insurance company, so your progressive insurance, there's someone who insures you. So there's a big, huge conglomerate that insures progressive for their reinsurance that backs them up. 
they're worldwide. They're usually pretty large companies. So if there's a tsunami in Japan or wildfires in California, those claims and things do affect the worldwide economy. Okay. So like if Progressive had substantial losses in a state, yes. then they don't have maybe enough money to cover the claims. They purchase their own insurance. Correct. And that's what reinsurance and is. That's what reinsurance is. Yes. Okay. And then yes. everybody sounds like they purchase reinsurance. Yes. All the major, so worldwide. So like you yes. said, tsunami in Japan has major losses. California has major losses. Now Progressive in Florida has major losses. So now that reinsures paying a lot of claims yes. to the independent agencies. Or the, that's or the exactly largest, it. That's how we're, oh. And reinsurance prices have gone up. So the insurance companies are paying more to purchase their reinsurance. Okay. So that's been a part of it as well. So it, it's trickled down. It really yes, is. Yes, it is. It is. It is. And we had many companies uh, go bankrupt here in Florida, as you probably know. In the past two and a half years, about 12 companies have gone bankrupt. Uh, home insurance companies primarily. What's been happening is we have been inundated with fraud and litigation over the years, and it's just built up to be the perfect storm to have companies just not be able to afford to be in business. To give you an example, in 2019, nationwide there were 117,000 folks that sued their own homeowner company. So nationwide, 117,000 lawsuits. Out of that figure, like 101 of them were for the 49 other states. Mm -hmm. The rest of the over 100,000 were in Florida for that one year. So let's say Iowa might have two people sue their homeowner company. Florida, we have over 100,000 in that year. Wow. So it's been really way out of whack in Florida, and that's what's hurt us. So I know that there's a program here called Citizens, and, yes. and most people in Florida do know Citizens because... Yes major carriers are dropping. Yes. They're dropping like flies. Like you said, some of them are going bankrupt, but some of them are just choosing not to write in the market anymore. What happens, what's if somebody do if they get a notice from their carrier saying, we're not going to insure you again next year? Uh, what, that's happening a lot and homeowners yes. don't know what to do. They get scared. Yes. What's the first steps? Yes. That's such a great question. And that's happening to some businesses too, in the business realm of insurance for their properties as well. So commercial businesses and personal homes. Wow. I didn't know that. I didn't yes. know it's, so it's yes. the commercial industry now as well. Exactly. Okay. If you happen to own a building, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, the best thing for them to do right away is start working on getting a new policy with an independent agent. Okay. For example, at our agency, we're independent. Well, what the heck does that mean? That means we literally deal with hundreds of companies. So when a client comes to us, we search with pretty much every company that we have and provide them with most competitive rates we can find. So an independent generally has access to hundreds of companies. So, Paula, you said independent agencies have connections with a bunch of different insurance providers. Yes. So if I'm going to one of the name brand carriers, mm -hmm. they're just shopping their policy. Whereas if we go to an independent insurance agency like Florida All Risk is an example, yes. then you guys, you shop everybody or you shop a yes. lot of people right yes so yes. do you show your clients that hey this is how we shop because you know somebody's do we just believe trust me and then you just got me the best price or do you actually say hey here's the agencies we shopped at all the different prices and we think you should go with this one because it fits you best how, how yes. does that work for you that's such a great question tommy and yes we do have that available we can show a report of all the quotes that we received and then some of the companies might decline to quote the property for whatever reason, maybe due to their underwriting guidelines. So it will also show in the report, oh, decline, decline, not available, closed in that zip code or what have you. So we can share that with our clients so they can actually see what we've done and how it all played out with their particular property. If they come to you and you give them that report and it shows that they were declined, if they just went to another agency... Is it going to be declined there as well for that carrier? Generally, yes. Okay. Yes. Let's say if another agency is quoted with that same company, it would decline it as well for whatever reason due to underwriting. That's assuming, though, the other agent is quoting similar. Sometimes agents Maybe make errors. Maybe with the same information or they yes. make errors, and so something comes back, but then that's, that's a question. Yes, but assuming it's they're quoting the same way, it should come back declined for whatever reason they're declining it. That's awesome. Some companies are closed in certain counties. Some are closed in certain zip codes. Some of the computers, Tommy, they're so sophisticated. When I put in an address, their system knows they might have 10 other homes insured on that street. Okay. They don't want to put the 11th home on that street because they've got to spread their risk. So they'll come back and decline it. Ah. It can be that individual. Wow. So, yes. so it sounds like the technology in the insurance industry is really oh, picking up. It, it sounds it like has. a numbers and a statistics game now. Uh, pretty much, yes, yes. Fascinating. 
Yeah, so it's so interesting. You are the insurance lady. That's your okay. moniker. Yes. I've once seen Paula come to one of my networking meetings and pull a baseball bat out and knock it out of the park. <laughs> I still to this day don't know where she was hiding that baseball bat. <laughs> So you are a networking master. It's a privilege, privilege to network with you. So so what could you share about networking and maybe marketing in general okay. to, to other professionals in the insurance industry, in the construction industry? How can you uh, relay some of this little, little nugget of amazingness you have and tell us about what do you do or how could somebody else pick up and try to Aww. try to just hold a small candle to you? Well, and Tommy, I say ditto. <laughs> <laughs> We're just two peas in a pot here. <laughs> I would say what I've learned over the years is make it fun, make it different. I'm Paula the insurance lady. People tend to remember that. And if you have a quick minute, I can tell you how I arrived at that. Oh, absolutely. We're all ears. I was in the restaurant marketing business for years before I got into insurance. And I would go to all the radio and TV stations and bring food and pies and do a ton of grassroots marketing. And when I started walking into the radio stations, they started going, oh, you're the pie lady, you're the pie lady, because I brought them pies. Okay. Well, don't you know, one of the promotion managers at Clear Channel Radio, that is the largest radio station uh, conglomerate nationwide, 5,000 stations, he left here. He went to New York. He went to Chicago. He went to L.A., worked all the big markets for Clear Channel, did a million promotions. I ran into him 10 years later, and he said, hey, you're the pie lady. And I said, oh, my gosh, he remembers this after 10 years. And that's how I became the insurance lady. That's my branding story. Promotional manager remembered that 10 years later, and I was hooked. So that's that's how, incredible. That's, that's so cool. That's that's what happens. Okay, yeah. And the other thing I would say for myself, we market to referral partners. Okay. Like folks like yourself, and I think vice versa. Mm -hmm. Uh, as opposed to going directly after one consumer, let's say. Okay. We're up against all the big guns, all state, state farm, Geico, 600 million marketing budgets. I, I can't do that. So I market with referral partners. And that's a huge success, I think, for a lot of us in small business. So there's there's an old saying that, that you will do bad business with somebody you know well before you'll do good business with somebody you don't know. Oh. <laughs> And, and I like to get, to get to know you and do good business. Yes. I like to do both on the positive yes. side. Yes. Uh, but referral and relationship-based marketing, I'm glad you touched on that, is big Huge. in every industry, Huge. but especially in a saturated industry like an in insurance. I mean, because you can see certain lizard advertisements everywhere you right. go. exactly. And, and that, you're right, that, that's a big competitive it's nature. So. Huge competitive. And, of course, we want to refer to people that we – we, we trust implicitly. We vet our referral sources. And uh, with someone like yourself, of course, we trust you implicitly. I would never want to send one of my clients over to someone I didn't know and trust. That's amazing. Thank you for that. So Thank you so much. So I have a cool little story, too, now that you okay. brought up the pies. Okay. This green hard hat right here. Okay. So when I be first became an LGBT business enterprise, I was one of only 50 construction companies certified nationwide with that designation oh. in the construction industry. And I wore that to a conference about four or five years ago here in Tampa. Last month, I went to uh, an NGLCC conference, again, a similar conference, but in Denver. And I walk up to inter my, introduce myself to two procurement officers from J.P. Morgan Chase, and I had that helmet on, okay. the same one I wore five years ago. They said, you're Tommy, the hard hat guy. You're the same one. Yeah. Five years ago, Five, we, had, yeah. we had talked maybe once in an email, and they still remember me because I created Love something it. different, a niche, a, a market, yes. a, a reminder yes. that it's a little different. So it sounds like you do that. You did that with pies at one point. Yes. And yes. now your moniker, the insurance lady, knocking yes. out of the park. Yes. That you do that. So so my success has been the hard hat. That's great. So that's, that's right. And we'll just we'll keep working with it. That's awesome. There's all, it, sound, it sounds like that there's, a, there's a rhyme and a reason and a pattern there. I think we should have a hard hat decorating contest. Wow. That you would heard be it right fun. here. On, that would be fun. You heard it right here on Tommy's yeah. uh, uh, toolbox. You know, just whatever you want to do, any <laughs> theme. I can just see. I have some themes in my head already. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Okay, Paula, uh, we're going to move on to stud finders. Okay. I would love for you to give me the name of a person or company you see as really being on top of their game and why. Actually, Tommy, it's you. Really? It is. I thought about this long and hard, and I'm out and about, a lot of marketing groups, a lot of community service, a lot of public events, and as soon as I met you, I just fell in love with you. Your wow. effervescent, you can tell that you're 
you're a true person and always doing what's best for your clients. You know that right away when we first met you. And now what you're doing with your business is phenomenal and what you're doing in the community. So I say it's all you. Well, thank you so much. And I didn't even pay you for that. (laughs) (laughs) You will, though. You will. will. (laughs) Later. Later, you're going to get a nice dinner. (laughs) So tell me a little bit, what forward-thinking innovations are are kind of most exciting right now in your industry. It's really transforming. Yes. So do you see anything that any people, any things, any ideas that are happening that are just kind of like, wow, that's starting to get out there? Well, technology is a huge factor. Okay. And in many cases, I think it truly helps us because we can quote, for example, with multiple carriers at one time, Okay. which is huge for our clients so that we can truly search the marketplace. Also, some of our companies are changing to allow us to quote online where we had to manually send a quote to an underwriter, wait a few days. Now they're going more on an online basis, which tends to be faster and more efficient to serve our clients. So that technology is allowing to evaluate the applications based on the preset criteria and turn it around to you way faster. Yes, as opposed to the old, oh my gosh, filling out forms, sending it out to an underwriter. Sometimes you might wait a day, five days. Now you can do it right online. So that's a big help to our clients. That uh, sounds our, like, I mean, have you had instances where the same day of a closing that you've had been called and yes. said, hey, could you get this? I mean, before, no, sorry, your closing's backed yes. up two weeks. But now, exactly. you, can you do that? Yeah, 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 pretty much we can. It all depends on the individual circumstance. But okay. give or take, we can pretty much do that now, which is a huge advantage. Wow. So Paul, the insurance lady helps you close on time. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's great. Sometimes we get panicked people that call, I'm closing today. Help. <laughs> it does happen. Yeah, that's amazing. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. So The construction site. Yes. This fun little segment here. Where do you think the industry is going? Mm-hmm. Well, I would say worldwide, nationwide, and specific to Florida, we're only growing We have new companies coming into the marketplace every day. That's crucial to Florida right now with this insurance crisis. We're hearing that we've got several different homeowner companies coming in. There are new flood carriers coming in as well. So it is growing. And I think that that competition helps maintain those rates. So competition is probably a good thing. That, that's incredible. That's good to hear. Uh, yes, I'm sure all is. the homeowners listening want it to hear is. something like that. And, you know, if I could talk about something timely right now, uh, the government might be shutting down. Mm-hmm. If it does, most folks don't realize that shuts down FEMA and the National Flood Insurance Program. Wow. So if this were to happen, if you're buying a house next week and the government shuts down this weekend, you wouldn't be able to write a FEMA policy if they're shut down. That's insane. So people don't realize the National Flood Program goes through FEMA and it's federal. Are there the, are there private flood programs? Yes, there are. Okay. We actually represent some private flood carriers, and we have more private flood companies coming into Florida. And in some cases, their rates might be much more competitive than the National Flood Program. Got it. Okay, so. because the National Flood Program is probably just dividing round numbers, and they're not doing the analysis like these private carriers are. Because private carriers do want to make money. But they have to do that by being competitive. So it sounds like you could potentially have some options to get people off of government-issued policies and back to a private policy where where they can save some money. Because sometimes the rates are vastly more competitive with the private. But sometimes it's it's the the national program through FEMA is a better price as well. It all can depend. But it's good that we have those options for our folks. Yeah, I didn't even know there were private uh, flood places and policies in Florida, especially for coastal and other things. I I, I never even heard of that. I thought that was markets have just been abandoned here. So yeah, they're here and there's more coming, thank goodness. That's great. That's yeah. that's wonderful. So Paula, we were talking before the show. Um, you have a really cool new commercial policy out there for auto that is really geared towards the trade guys like yes. myself and other small construction uh, companies yeah. and providers. Can you tell us about that? Because we always need more insurance oh, advice. I'm so glad that we talked about this. We're very excited This is something that's much needed, and we're just starting to work on it now as it's brand new. And I'll give an example. Let's say you've got Joe the landscaper. There's Joe himself in his one truck, and he's doing a bunch of residential homes, making a pretty decent living, but he bids on a nice commercial building, and he gets the bid because, of course, he's one man, one truck, and sometimes his bids can be more competitive. Mm -hmm. Now the folks that hired him said, hey, Joe, you know what? For you to work on this job, you have to have a million dollars in your general liability, Most of our folks may have that, but if not, they do go out and purchase it. You need your workers' comp coverage. Mm -hmm. 
Some may have it, some may not. But more importantly, they say, hey, Joe, for your truck, you need to have a million dollars on your truck on bodily injury liability. And I need that certificate before you can start working this big contract and making this money. That's expensive coverage. Yes. That's not your yes. typical you and me driving around town or home policy. Yes. Where it's just a, a hundred bucks a month, 200 bucks a month. Yes. That, that's very expensive coverage. In Florida, the minimum you can buy is 10,000 in bodily injury. They want them to carry a million. 10 times more. A lot more. And wow. the bodily injury is if, let's say, you ran through a stop sign and you hit into another car. Okay. And those folks were injured and you caused that accident. Mm-hmm. That's what the bodily injury pays for, for the other people. Okay. So now the folks hiring Joe, the landscaper, say, Joe, you have to have a million dollars on your auto. Well, of course, right now, Florida has the highest auto rates in the country. Okay. That drives his premium so sky high, he can't afford the job. Okay. The premiums just price him out. And then Joe says, oh, man, what am I going to do? I had to increase my coverage, maybe buy work comp if needed. Mm-hmm threw them out of the job. So it really holds back a lot of small business. We have a company that has really thought about this, and they have a special new program where this contractor can buy the coverage and perhaps carry a lower bodily injury, but when they go on the job site for the specific job needed, the coverage clicks in to give them the million. Wow. When he leaves the job site, it clicks back down to be lower to help lower his overall rates. Wow. So this is so exciting because then folks like Joe can get these bids and work on these bigger jobs, and it can be more affordable for them to help them grow their business. So if I understand correctly, if yes. he's only there one day a week, yes, then he's only paying that, that right. difference in rate that one day a week. Well, I think the rates are built in when he purchases okay, it, okay. but it's a much lower. But still, when he's on that job site, that million clicks in. Clicks in. But when he's doing mm-hmm. um, your yard or my yard where we don't require such a high liability, Correct. Then, then he's fine with the standard coverages. Exactly. But when he's on ABC Corporation property, uh, then he has that coverage, and so yes. he's good to go. Yes. That's massive for it small is. business owners. For all these small artisan contractors that face this all the time. We have a lot of plumbers, uh, carpenters, Everyone, painters, we've seen this happen time and time again, and it really shoots them out of getting those bids because of the increased insurance. That's that's one of the biggest things. Cash flow is king is. in small it businesses, is. and the larger the company, the slower the yes. pay. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? And yeah. so being able to to help reduce your costs so you yes. can step up, and, and yes. it, it's, it's amazing. That's an incredible Amazing, product. I know, and I think it will be uh, more companies will start offering that. I feel myself with the uh, the predicator to that was was a lot of folks that drive for Uber. Let's say okay. that's what happens when they're when they're on the clock for Uber. The Uber coverage kicks in. Okay. So I think that's kind of where they got that idea. So that that's in my mind how this all started happening. So you heard it here fo- uh, first, folks. Yes. If you have one of those big policies or big big jobs coming up and you need yes. to up your uh, coverage, I think you guys need to talk to Paula, the insurance lady, because it sounds like. Uh, that's going to save quite a bit of money oh. to small providers out yes, there. Yes, it sure will, and it will make them have affordable coverage at what they need to be able to grow their business. So it's such an exciting product. Wow, man, the timing for that was perfect for this podcast. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make one note about workers' comp insurance? Yes. Okay, in the state of Florida, when you carry work comp, of course you get your policies. The big caveat is some work comp companies will give you a what they call dividend of your premium. Okay. You can get money back where others do not. Okay. So, for example, let's say you're paying 5000 a year for your workers' comp. Okay. You've had no losses, no claims. You're beautiful, no losses at all. You paid 5000 Well, then you come up for renewal. Okay, there you go, nothing back. Another company that you've paid 5000 can have you on the dividend program They'll say, hey, Tommy, you haven't had any claims, so we're going to give you 30% of your premium back. They call that a dividend. Okay. So wow. you're paying 5000 here, you're paying 5000 there, but one might give you that dividend. So I always tell folks, ask their agent, are they with the dividend program through their work comp? And if not, could they get on one? Because some companies offer it, some do not. So it's rewarding you for being safe on your yes. job site. Yes, they call it a dividend of your premium. Which most of these companies are extremely safe on their job site anyway. Yes, So yes. at least they're getting credit back for doing the right thing. Yes, yes. That, so, that's astronomical. It I is. I didn't even know about that program. It is. You want to make sure you're getting that dividend. And do you, um, does the, do you service 
the construction industry in general and yes, multiple yes, different types. Yes. Because I know in Florida, especially, the construction mm-hmm. industry is very challenging for work comp. It is. I think I think roofers have it the worst, but oh. contractors are right behind that. Yeah. Uh, we we have the highest work comp premiums in the entire state, yeah. and sometimes I've I've even been quoted minimum um, minimum requirements uh-huh. at ten thousand dollars policies. I know. I know. It, that's it's, it's just astronomical, and they don't care if you have one or ten employees. Our minimum policy minimum. is this much. That is correct. A lot of companies have those minimums. That's why that dividend, if you can get with a company that has a dividend, yeah. once again, huge for small business. Yeah, that, that, that's incredible. So, I mean, I could get, I could yes. get $3,000 back, and all of a sudden it's a lot more affordable. Right. Right. Just for being safe. Right. Well, thanks for sharing that amazing oh tip. Yes, you are welcome. You are welcome. <laughs> okay, Paula, yeah. we've been having a lot of fun, but we're going to ratchet it up. Okay. This is the humor portion of our show. Okay, I'm ready. So tell me, what is the craziest mistake you've ever heard of in the industry? I love this. <laughs> uh, there was a home that needed a new roof, and their insurance was replacing it for them due oh. to a claim they had. Okay. The roofers went to the wrong house next door and put on the roof because <laughs> none, neither of the homeowners were home. They uh-huh. were, like, both gone for the week. Uh-huh. So the people that were expecting it weren't there. The people that got the new roof weren't there, and they just put a whole new roof on the wrong house. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that other that other homeowner got a brand-new roof for free, didn't right. they? Right. You can't exactly take that back. <laughs> no. You can't return that at Target. <laughs> <laughs> It's just one of those, neither of them were home, and they just did it. That's insane. I know. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, that, 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 that new homeowner should have, should have played the lottery that night. That was pretty good. New roof. <laughs> Paula, tell me about a funny construction story, story, or maybe you have a construction joke, joke. to share with us. <laughs> I do. Okay. <laughs> what kind of bird works on a construction site? Crane? A crane. Ah! <laughs> you knew it. I love you it. knew it. Never heard it before, but love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's <laughs> Well, we're at the end of our podcast. Uh, this is a time where we say thanks for a job well done, Paula. You are an absolute pleasure having. I always have so much fun networking with you. Um, and it was great having you on the show. Oh, Tommy, thank you so much. So glad to be here with you. So proud to be a part of your team. And we should look forward to helping you and your clients. And let's have a great 2023 and the year with the bang. That sounds great. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us for Tommy's Toolbox, the podcast. If you have any questions about my company, Tomco Solutions, construction, industry, or real estate investing, please be in touch with or visit me at TomcoSolutions.com. My contact information is in the episode description, and I will put Paula's there as well so you can get some great insurance advice. We'd both love to hear from you. Till next time, thank you again. I look forward to seeing you at the construction site for the next episode of Tommy's Toolbox, the podcast. Have a great day, everyone.